Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to Truth Noir. Uh, This is a very special episode of Truth Noir, not only because we're still celebrating the second anniversary of Truth Noir, uh, two and a half years into our, uh, I think, third season now. Uh, Yeah, no one knew it was going to last this long, uh, myself included. So to anyone watching, thank you for tuning in. To anyone uh, catching us on YouTube, you guys are rad. Uh, we've had a lot of traffic on the uh, uh, net neutrality episode. Uh, if you haven't watched it yet, check it out. It's a, apparently a humdinger that uh, people seem to be responding to. So, um, so tonight we have a little bit different thing going on. Uh, we are joined once again by uh, one of our favorite guests, longtime friend of the show, and uh, you know, fellow concerned citizen, Mr. Steve Moshney, thank you, sir. Thank you for uh, for joining us tonight. Uh, we're going to uh, be talking about the recent uh, event that happened, where our president has endorsed uh, Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. And uh, while this may seem to some of you like, oh, what's the big deal? Uh, it turns out that it's actually a massive deal uh, it, it, on biblical proportions because uh, this is, uh, as we've talked about briefly on uh, previous episodes, this is one of the things that uh, was prophesized as uh, being one of the signs of the beginnings of the end times and for a lot of uh, tribulations to come. Hopefully that's not the case. I'd, I'd like very much for like everything to just be cool and for there not to be a bunch of wars over the matter. Um, but we'll see. Uh, Mr. Moshni here uh, has come on before as our resident biblical scholar and talked to us a lot about what these things mean as far as the scriptures are concerned. Uh, but first, as happens all the time when he comes on, he's going to grace us with some of his fantastic music. Uh, this is an original piece. No, today is a cover. It's playing a cover tune for us, uh, and uh, but it is relevant to the case. I'm going to slide the mic over to him, and uh, and we're just going to listen to a song for a little bit, you guys. So stick with us. This is a song by a, a famous uh, gospel singer. Uh, he's dead now. His name was Larry Norman, and he wrote the song in the '70s. And it's filled with guns and wars all of us got trampled on the floor I wish we'd all been ready children died the days grew cold a piece of bread could buy a bag of gold I wish we'd all been ready there's no time to change your mind the sun has come and you've been left behind a man and wife asleep in bed she hears a noise turns her head he's gone i wish we'd all been ready two men walking up a hill one disappears and one's left standing still I wish we'd all been ready there's no time to change your mind the sun has come and you've been left behind Oh, the demons died. The sun- 
sun has come and you've been left behind don't be don't be left behind don't be don't be left behind oh wow thank you sir Thank you for the chance, man. Yeah, man. So, uh, so we got some strange things going on in the world, and uh, uh, yeah, it, it would seem to me that these uh, these things that have been written in books that are thousands of years old, people would. Um, you know, that say, if you do this, it's going to create a lot of conflict, uh, that maybe they would not do them, but, uh, but they, they seem to just keep doing the things. And so we're glad to have you on the show tonight to, uh, kind of get into the meat and potatoes and the guts of what this decision really means on the world stage yeah. and how it relates to, uh, scripture. And so, uh, so thanks for being on, man. Yeah, thank uh, you for having me. Where, I just enjoy it. Where do we start? <laughs> where do we start? Yeah, that's, uh, you know, the uh, it's such an enormous, enormous issue. And uh, it's, it's so enormous from so many different uh, perspectives. It's imp so important politically. It's so important spiritually. It's so important religiously. It's so important biblically. It's so important to the Christian. It's so important to the Muslim. It's so important to the Jews. <laughs> and so it's, you know, there's so many ways to look at it. Yeah, everyone and, that's in the area has a lot to gain and a lot to lose. Yes. It seems like everyone's missing the point. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I got some slides just because to organize my thoughts because there is so many ways to talk about it. So sure. maybe these could help us uh, at least give us a little bit of a roadmap of how to talk about it. Though, though if, you know, one of the first things I wanted to look at is, you know, for uh, there was another uh, slide that I had where it talked about someone from Washington says that if Trump declared Jerusalem the capital of Israel, it would be a dream come true. A dream. Uh, was there the first one or, you know, it says it would be a dream come true for Israel, but it would be a nightmare for the Arabs. And so, uh, right. and, and so, you know, so that's what actually what we're seeing right now is that these, this, you know, I understand I'm Palestinian and I know uh, my family's Muslim, even though I'm a Christian. And so they, I know how important Jerusalem is to them. Sure. And so, uh, well, I mean, to this day, the city itself is split into quarters this is the old city. The old city is split into quarters, which is, but the old city, the whole old city is in the part called East Jerusalem, which is considered the Arab part. And, okay. and the Israeli part historically has been the West Jerusalem. There's two parts. There's West Jerusalem, which is Israeli, and it is the Israeli capital because that's where all of the Supreme Court, their legislature, and their, uh, uh, the, pre uh, the residence of the president and everything is in West Jerusalem. Okay. But in 1967, Israel, there was the Six-Day War. Israel took over the East Jerusalem as well, as well as the, re the rest of the West Bank. Yeah, and well, in the Sinai Peninsula for a minute as well. Right? The, they had the Sinai, the Gaza Strip, the Golan Heights. The, right. All those areas were taken in 1967 in the Six-Day War. And uh, eventually they returned the Sinai to Egypt, and it's now Egyptian. Right. And uh, the West Bank is still... Uh, it's still under Israeli control, even though, it, you know, they're just discussing turning it into a Palestinian state along with the Gaza Strip. Um, so, but Jerusalem is different than everything. Jerusalem is on a, is in a special category. There's nothing like Jerusalem. You touch Jerusalem, it, it is just, it, uh, it can set off. Uh, you know, we could talk about in 2000, Ariel Sharon went and walked on the Temple Mount, we did a program about that once. Right. It started a war that lasted eight years, you know, because the most holy sites are there for uh, the holiest. It's the holiest site for the Jews because of the temple. They have Solomon's Temple, and they also had Herod's Temple. 
Right. Uh, both of them were built there and destroyed there. And uh, then the Muslims, uh, I want to say, we have this uh, we have this slide here, which shows the Islamic claim. Can you go full screen on that? And uh, this isn't just the Islamic claim. This also is the Jewish claim, because uh, um, if you look on the left, uh, at that little picture on the left there, it's not really clear. Okay, there you go. That's a picture of Abraham. And according to Islam, the Abraham offered his son Ishmael right. on this rock right here that's in the middle. And that rock right there is in the, the Dome of the Rock. And this is the rock in the middle that we're looking at? Yes, the, that rock in the middle. It's called the Pierced Stone. Now, now this to the Muslims, they say this is where Muhammad came. And when he came to this rock, they say he flew up to heaven on the picture on the right where he's flying on that horse. Oh, yes. He flew up to heaven and he met Jesus and Abraham and Moses there. And he met God and stuff. And he got, that's where he was told that you're supposed to pray five times a day. And it's called the night journey. And there's a surah in the Quran called the night journey. In Arabic, it's called Isra'u Mi'raj. And so, but this stone right here is in the Dome of the Rock, and they say that all these things happen here. As so, there's two main things that the Muslim for the Muslims in uh, Jerusalem. Number one, that Abraham they believe offered Ishmael there, and then this is where Muhammad came, and they said he ascended to heaven from there. Now, if we could just look at the rock again, because that rock is also to the Jews, it's called the foundation stone. To the Jews, they say that this rock, this exact rock, is the Holy of Holies of the Temple. That this rock was in the Temple of Solomon. And they also say that this is where Abraham presented Isaac. So the Jews say Abraham presented Isaac at this stone. And this is inside the Dome of the Rock. So now Ishmael and Isaac are the They're same brothers. Okay. They're brothers. They're the children of Abraham. Abraham had Ishmael first from Hagar his okay. wife Hagar, but then he had uh, Isaac from Sarah. And so they're, brother, they're half brothers, you okay. know, because same father, different mother. Sure. Yeah. So, but anyway, the Muslims identify with Ishmael because the common belief is that the Arabs descended from Ishmael. Okay. And that the Jews came from Isaac. And so the, the Arabs say that uh, Ishmael was offered at this stone. The Jews say that Isaac was offered at this stone. Now, the Christians also believe that Isaac was offered at this stone. Okay. So, any, But anyway, this stone for the Jews is, is very important. They say Adam and Eve were there. They say that, that this is where Noah came, where the ark landed. And oh, wow. It's, a very, it's called the foundation stone, which is extremely important. For a number of reasons. For a number of reasons yeah. to the Jews. And so, but it is... For the M Muslims, this is the third holiest site after Mecca and, and Medina. Medina. But to the Jews, this is the number one holiest site. And so, anyway, this is the, the heart of the whole, uh, which we did a program here once right, about yeah. just that rock because it's so controversial. But anyway, this is to show you the Islamic claim to sure. Jerusalem. It's based on that. Everything else, there's other things now with the Palestinian capital that it would eventually be the Palestinian capital and stuff like that. But that's political. But the heart of the issue is this rock right here. It's this, uh, uh, this uh, the Dome of the Rock building there, which is probably the most beautiful building in the Middle East, as well as the Al-Aqsa Mosque, which is right next to it. Two mosques. There is the, well, the Al-Aqsa is a mosque. The, this is more like, almost like, you know, I don't I don't want to be irreverent to them and say that it's like a museum, but it almost is. Okay. You know, it's not really a mosque. It's more a place to, to uh, for this rock, to memorialize this rock. And stuff. Okay. So, uh, so anyway, that's the Islamic claim to Jerusalem. And, uh, you know, if you look at the uh, Iran's primary military force, it's called the Al-Quds force, which means Jerusalem. It is to the one point... 1.6 billion Muslims in the world. It is an extremely important, very holy site. And, and so to touch Jerusalem is to essentially impact all these people. So. Right. And so anyway, I just wanted to show, first of all, the Islamic claim. If we could, could we show the next, uh, the next slide? Is someone in there? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, if we could queue up the next slide. Yeah, there you go. There we go. We got, uh, got uh, Netanyahu bo here. Booby, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, this, now, the reason, uh, 
And the reason I wanted to show this is because, you know, uh, Donald Trump didn't just do this and foist it upon the Israelis because, you know, that would be very dangerous. Just say, hey, we're doing this. And then all of a sudden the Jews have to deal with the, the fallout. But this was actually planned with Israel. It says Netanyahu and his aides were active participants in the lead up to this announcement about Jerusalem as uh, status as the capital of Israel. So Israel was involved. They wanted this. They want. We, uh, they want that. Uh, they want that little recognition. They want there. that little piece of the rock too, yeah. right? Well, they, Israel, legally, they control all of Jerusalem. They control all of the West Bank and all of Jerusalem. You know, right. legally, they took it over in 1967. But sure. the rest of the world does not recognize this. So, uh, as we continue, we'll see more. Can we go to the next one? Yeah, let's get the next slide going. Yeah, so, and that's... Uh, and so, uh, yeah, while we're queuing up the next slide, like, what... Uh, so, so this has been in conjunction, basically, in cooperation okay. with Israel and the United yeah, States. Yeah, they both... I mean, it wasn't a surprise to Israel. They wanted this. They've wanted it since 1960. Israel recognizes Jerusalem, all of Jerusalem, as their capital already. The rest of the world doesn't. Right. So, but, you know, this wasn't just in a vacuum either. Because a couple of weeks ago, 151 states in the United Nations voted in the General Assembly on a resolution disavowing Israeli ties to Jerusalem. All J European Union countries supported that resolution. So it was like, it was like the, the other countries, in the, uh, almost all of the countries in the United Nations voted saying that Israel has no claim to Jerusalem. And so, you know, this, it's almost yeah, like there's... And so, and so to put it in perspective, 150 nations, like this is not just the United Nations, mm -hmm. the United Nations, this is the majority of the world. Like yes. there, I think there are 250 some odd there's nations. There's about 196. 196, so that's an even greater representation of nations that do not support what the U.S. and the Israelis are trying to do. And, well, even before the United States did it, these guys voted saying that there is no, uh, that there is no Israeli tie to Jerusalem. But that's ridiculous, too, because there absolutely is a historical right. tie to yeah. Jerusalem, <laughs> you know. And so th what they're doing is, is really not better, you know. They're, you know, they're not helping the situation. Sure. Because it's... You know, it's ap historically, it's absolutely clear that there were Jews. This was the place that King David was. This was the place that Joshua came to. You know, so historically, you can't, you, this is a ridiculous thing to say. Yeah, and there are historical references, like there are third party historical Oops. writings outside, of the, outside of the Bible. Very much so. Yes. I, be, I, because, you, you know, you, you get the, like, faith aside, mm -hmm. there is a certain matter of the surgical, the circular argument logical fallacy where where you have the uh uh well uh god said the jews are the chosen people well where else does it say that well nowhere except this one book well who wrote that book the god of the jews like that's that, that's a tough thing for a oh, lot yeah. of people, people yeah. to to get around right and so but Third party wise, yes. there is collaboration. There is historical of this. evidence, and there's so much historical evidence right. to disprove it. So, what the United Nations did here is ridiculous, too. I mean, right. this, is, yeah, this is like, that doesn't help the situation. They're not trying to help the situation there. They're, yeah. they're, they're kind of pouring gas on the fire, too, you know? So, but I just wanted to show that, that this isn't a one sided thing. It's, you can't touch Jerusalem without things exploding. <laughs> that, that place just. You know, you, you say one word wrong, you know, and you could start, right. you know. Well, I mean, it, and it kind of begs the question, like, so then what do you do? Yeah. It, it is, is the overarching, yeah. like, how, how do you appease this situation? Be, like, because it seems to me that, uh, like, back in the, like, very early 1900s, and previously, like after the Crusades, there was some sort of commiseration between the two, and they shared the area. A a am I incorrect in this? Uh, like, it depends. It depends. It was like Jerusalem has been occupied and destroyed 38 times 
historically. Right. Sure. And so, you know, the, uh, you know, if you could go back historically all the way to the first time in the Bible, for instance, that it's mentioned is in uh, when Abraham, 2,000 years before Christ, you know, 4,000 years ago, yeah. where there's a king named Melchizedek who came to Abraham, and he was the king of Salem. It was, that was Jerusalem back then. It's called Salem, which yeah. means peace. And uh, some people believe that he is Shem, the son of Noah, the third son of Noah. Oh, really? And okay. That, uh, but uh, so that we have, and there's evidence of his existence. And then when Joshua came a few hundred years later, there was another king named Adonai Zedek. You know, they had the Zedek that seemed to add that to all their kings, you know, same way Pharaoh, you know, is a sure. name that's a or Caesar. Yeah. So, you know, there's so many different claims on it, you know, but, uh, uh, but we got, uh, could we go to the next, uh, the next uh, slide? So, but, you know, this is, yeah, okay, here, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Can we go full screen on that? Yeah, yeah, it says, if Washington recognized Jerusalem as Israel's capital, it would be the first country to do so since the foundation of the state in 1948. So this right here, you know, just that, you know, Israel from the beginning has said that Jerusalem is our capital, but nobody recognized that. And, you know, because of the religious implications, including the Catholic Church, the Orthodox Church, they're all involved in this as well. Sure. But, the, you know, the bigger issue is the Islamic concern, you know, that uh, with the with the Dome of the Rock. Yeah, because we forget that uh, Islam is a massive, uh, it's it's a hugely represented in the population of the earth. It's a, a one, six. One fourth. A, a <laughs> one quarter. Fourth quarter of the world's population. It, it, that's a big deal, you guys. <laughs> like, there's yeah. there's not that many, I mean, maybe there's that many Buddhists in the world, but uh, like no, Islam, Islam is a, a massive uh, congregation <laughs> in the world. Uh, it, as as is Christianity and uh, you know, Judaism, uh, you know, is Judaism of, is only got like there's only like about 20 million Jews, or around that many in the world, and yet you know they're very uh, blessed. Yeah. Well, there were well there were some contributing factors to that. Uh, <laughs> well, the decrease in numbers. Their uh, population generally but, uh, has been that much, you know, around the world. And but uh, could we go to the next slide? Um, this is this is an interesting thing. The 87 countries with embassies in Israel have placed them in Tel Aviv rather than Jerusalem. So these all these countries have, you know, relation diplomatic relations with Israel, but none of them have put their embassies in Jerusalem. They all put them in Tel Aviv. Now there were some countries like Costa Rica and uh, some South American countries that did have their embassies in Jerusalem for a while, but they moved them out. Really? So okay. now everything is in Tel Aviv. So the world recognizes Tel Aviv as the capital of and, Israel. And, and now this was including the United States. Including, uh, to, to this day, it, that okay. is the United States Embassy in Tel Aviv. Oh, okay. So uh, no country has their embassy in Jerusalem now. But the U.S. has, begin, you know, the, the US has been saying Barack Obama promised, uh, you know, uh, George Bush promised. Bill Clinton, all of them promised to put the embassy in Jerusalem, but they were lying. And then, it, you know, as soon as they got in, they would just say, oh, oh look, keep signing. Uh, it's a waiver every six months saying, we'll do it six months later. Right. <laughs> and they never did it. But it looks like. Don so then our, our current president is like, no, oh, we're going to do it. Yeah. Well, you know, he did sign the waiver. He signed the waiver. But, you know, the reason why they want to move the embassy to Jerusalem, the reason is by doing that, you're saying that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. Well, he said it's the capital of Israel without moving the embassy. <laughs> so they got the effect without the cause. Without, yeah, without the, <laughs> so, uh, the, the, the catalyst is yes. still there without building the, the extra building. It's like having the Trojan horse, but ha getting the soldiers inside it without the horse. You know, cause, right. Because yeah, that was exactly. the intention. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good example. I just came up with that. So, oh, that's a good that one, now. man. Good, good job. <laughs> okay, we go to the next one. Yeah. Okay. Now, this I want to show a biblical prophecy about Jerusalem. Okay. Now this is the prophet Zechariah. He's one of the, you know, one of the major uh, 
actually he's considered one of the minor prophets actually, but he's an amazing prophet. Uh, talks very much about the end times. And this is a prophecy about the end times, about Jerusalem. And this is God speaking. He says, I'm going to make Jerusalem a cup that sends all the surrounding peoples reeling. I will make Jerusalem an immovable stone for all the nations. All who try to move it will injure themselves. So this is a prophecy about the end of the world. It's not just a prophecy about back in history. You know, this was written 500 years before Jesus. Well, yeah, and, and being a prophet, this is something that was told to him by God. Yes, um, well, this is actually saying God, God is the one saying this. Yeah, yeah. So uh, could we show the next one? Because I have another verse from the, from the Bible about Jerusalem. Now, this is a prophecy by Jesus. Jesus said this. Okay. He said, Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled. That, I mean, it will be under the control of, when Gentiles are the non-Jews. Right. It will be under the control of non-Jews until the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled. Now, the time of the Gentiles, you know, if I could just tell this is kind of a biblical you know, it doesn't mean... Uh, paraphrase. <laughs> yeah, uh, but what it means, essentially, is the time that of the church, you know, that from the time that Jesus died until, uh, you know, before Jesus comes back, that this is a time where God has been working with the Gentiles because prior in the Bible, God was working with the Jews and through the Jews primarily and through Israel. Right. Now, you know, the time of the Gentiles, God has been working with the Gentiles. But the time of the Gentiles will end when Jerusalem is no longer under the control of the Gentiles. Right. Well, Jerusalem has not legally been under the control of the Gentiles since 1967 because Israel has controlled all of it. But this step that Donald Trump take, some people are saying this is has to do with this verse. It is further in that direction than it was before. <laughs> yes, extremely so. And, you know, you know, before I came here tonight, I wanted to, uh, because things are happening so quick there sure. that I, I got to watch the news instantly just in case something happened before I came, and something did happen before I came here. And what oh, happened is, on us. <laughs> is the 57 Muslim nations, the 57 Muslims of the OIC, which is the Organization of Islamic Countries, yeah. they made a declaration. <laughs> And they declare, they're saying, we're going to declare Jerusalem the capital of Palestine. And so you got 57 nations saying this now. <laughs> so could we show the next? Uh, I just want to show you, this thing, this isn't going to go to sleep. You know, this thing is yeah, no, everyone's, worldwide everyone's repercussions. Everyone's ramping up because uh, it's not just the Muslims and the Jews, it is the allies of the Jews and the allies of the Muslims. But some very interesting things are happening, and I hope we can get to some of this. Some sure. very interesting things are happening that I would never in my lifetime have expected. Amazing things are happening that are inexplicable, I think. But uh, this right here, I just wanted to show you that this is the Dome of the Rock. It's yes, very well is, known. Yeah, Dome of the Rock Mosque. Yeah, the most famous. Uh, no, it's not a mosque, but the mosque is right next to it. Oh, Al Aqsa oh, Mosque is behind it there. That's where they pray. Okay. And so, uh, you know, when I go, when I'm in Jerusalem, I take so my now, father there. Now, the Dome of the Rock is that the smaller building in front? No, the Dome of the Rock is the one with the gold dome. Okay. The golden dome. That's the one that has the the foundation stone in it. Okay. The, of the Jews and. There's a whole story about that, you know, and, you know, because we got so much, uh, so I won't talk about it, but I did talk about it the last time we spoke right, about yeah. Jerusalem. With the temple, the, trying to rebuild right, the temple the rebuilding. episode, yeah. <laughs> you see that? Okay, can we see the next one? Okay, this is the president of the Palestinians. You know, I'm Palestinian, okay, but anyway, this is what he says, Mahmoud Abbas. He called, after this, what Trump said, he says, he calls on the world to reconsider recognition of Israel after Trump's Jerusalem move. Now this, he's not saying don't recognize Jerusalem as the capital. He says, he says about don't recognize capital. Israel at all. <laughs> right. And this is the president. This is the president. And he's, you know, most of the world, the 151 nations voted with him in yeah. the United Nations. They generally <laughs> side with him. He's a very influential, and he's saying, don't not forget Jerusalem, don't recognize Israel at all. And just show you how explosive this thing is, you know. And um, could we see the next one? I really hope we have time to get to, to what's happening with Saudi Arabia. Okay, um, uh, this, is, this is the thing that I'm amazed by. 
okay. is the Saudi Arabian uh, in participation. Okay. It's phenomenal because this is where the Wahhabis came from. This is the birthplace of Islam. This is where Mecca and Medina are. Right. And yet we're seeing some stuff from them that is just amazing. Uh, this is, uh, I'll just read this to you. Israeli intelligence minister invites the Saudi crown prince to visit Israel. That's pretty this unprecedented, is right? impossible five years ago. Describing Saudi Arabia as the leader of the Arab world, Israel Ketz proposes that the kingdom be the sponsor of the Israeli-Palestinian peace process. Can we go to the next one? This is, you know, so, so that is, uh, yeah, that's pretty amazing. This is phenomenal because so they're asking the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia. to help with this transition or whatever it is that's coming up. You know, you expected, I expected. Well, I mean, on Wednesday, I think it was a Wednesday when Donald Trump did this. You know, I know, I know my people. I know I've been there. I lived there so long, sure. and, and I know. What happens? Well, when I know there's certain episodes you haven't been able to make because you've been over been there. Over there. Yeah. But I was expecting a, a nuclear explosion to happen. That didn't happen. And not only did that not happen, but the fact that Saudi Arabia is talking to Israel right now about going to Saudi to Israel in while this their third holiest site, there, something is going on that we don't know. Something's going on behind yeah, the scenes. It seems to be. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, I mean, for Saudi Arabia, they are the most, this is where the Wahhabis come from. And they didn't just come from there, you know, like some freak thing. They were nurtured there sure. by the culture there. And, and yet they are, the king, the king of Saudi Arabia, he's amazing, man. Do you know they had their first music concert in Saudi Arabia last week in ever? Really? Their first music, and all these kids are rocking out. First time in history. Who played there? Uh, uh, it, was a, it was a Lebanese singer. Okay. But I, I applied. I said, hey, I want to come to an open mic there. So <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> but, you know, this king, he's really wanting to shake things up. It's yeah. an amazing thing. He's a young guy, 32 years old. So Solomon is his name. So okay. uh, I'm expecting some good things. But anyway, could we put that up? Yeah, I just wanted to, sh I wanted to show you what the Bible said. Okay. This is from the prophecy from the, from the prophet Ezekiel, you know. I know, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit all over the place. It's just that there's so much in this, you know, but... Yeah, no, it's a lot to take in. <laughs> this is what the prophecy says about... Uh, because this is the other side of the, of the, of the coin. Uh, uh, this is Ezekiel 38. Now, what I did is I changed the names of the countries it's from the historical names to, to today's country. Modern, this uh, was prophesied by the prophet Ezekiel about 3,000 years ago. He says, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I am against you, Russia, chief prince of Moscow. I will turn you around and put hooks in your jaws and bring you out with all your army, fully armed, a great horde, large and small shields, all of them brandishing their swords. Iran and Libya will be with them. And, you know, I don't even want to read the rest of it there, but Iran and Libya. He's saying, I'm going to bring Russia, Iran, and Libya together. If you look in Syria right now, which two countries are there running the show? Those ones. <laughs> Russia and Iran on right. the border of Israel. Okay, hey, can we go to the next one? You know, people, they're really interested in this. I think they have to rewatch this just so they get the deal because I'm saying so much. You know, I, yeah, I know. It's a lot to take in. He says, you will invade a land that has recovered from war whose people were gathered from many nations to the mountains of Israel, which had long been desolate. They had been brought out from the nations, and now all of them live in safety. This is Ezekiel saying this. Which people do you think that is? <laughs> That's talking about the Israel. These yeah. people that were gathered from all the nations back to Israel, to the mountains of Israel. And so, I mean, it's so clear what's being said here. Can we go to the next one? Okay, this is from the newspaper. This is from the newspaper, the Israeli newspaper, analysis. Russia will have to decide how it wants to split Syria with Iran. Moscow is withdrawing troops, but both it and Tehran, which is Iran, right. have experience in achieving influence by other means. So right now, 
they are right there in Syria. And let me tell you, Israel is not going to allow it. It's not, and I'm going to show you some more, you know. And can we put the next one up? Next time, I'm going to just going to make five covers. Okay, this is what Vladimir Putin says. He says, Russia, okay, Vladimir Putin says Russian troops will partially withdraw from Syria. But I want you to see what, what Prophet Ezekiel says. He says, I will turn you around and put hooks in your jaws and bring you out with your whole army. Just the one thing, okay, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but this, this hasn't happened yet. I wonder, watch what's happening in the next few weeks. See if Putin is able to get out. He's saying, I want to leave. This scripture right here seems to say he's not going to be able to leave. So this is just something to watch in the next few weeks. Yeah, well, I mean, we've seen this happen before where, where a nation will commit troops to an area and then the situation falls apart. Right. And, and then what are you going to do? Are you going to admit defeat? Right. You, you know, we, we, have, we have leaders of these nations that are pretty prideful mm -hmm. and don't want to do that. Right. Like this happened in Vietnam mm -hmm. for a long time or as we kept throwing bodies at mm -hmm. it. And uh, Iraq, Afghanistan, uh, any you know, I mean, you, you want to leave, but but it's interesting that, uh, you know, what interested me about this passage is he says, I'm going to turn you around when he says turn you around. That means he must be trying to leave. But God says, no, I'm not done with you. Get back here. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, you got prophecy left to fulfill. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can we go to the next one? I know I'm saying I'm saying so much stuff. I'm sorry, but um, uh, could we uh, go back one? Go back one. Okay, this one. Uh, this is what was interesting to me, is if you look at Ezekiel 38, that it, it, what interests me is U.S., Saudi, Israel axis. The United States, Saudi Arabia, and Israel are together. This is in an Israeli newspaper uh, 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 today. And uh, could we put the next one up? I mean, did you ever imagine Saudi Arabia and Israel are going to be in the same? You know, the Israeli intel minister to Saudi media, this is what, you know, when the Israelis want to communicate with the government in Saudi Arabia, they, they don't call the, the secretary and say, hey, I want to talk to the, to the king. What they do is they talk to the media, and then the right. Saudis read it in their newspaper. <laughs> it's so insane. <laughs> but listen to what he said. He said, Israel can strike Iranian missile plants in Lebanon, as is happening in Syria. Last week, Israel hit Damascus, and it was an Iranian military base in Damascus. Really? Yes, and they, and they had pictures of it and everything. And so somehow this does not make it into uh, regular American uh, news media? Oh, it was in the news media. It was huge. You wow. Know? And it was, but what they're saying here is that they have Saudi permission to do this now. Saudi Arabia used to say, Israel, the great, uh, you know, Zionist yeah, the great uh, entity, Satan the great Satan, you yeah. can't touch an Arab nation. Well, they got permission now from Saudi Arabia to go after the Shiites in Syria and Lebanon. You know, uh, just watch the next few weeks. Can we put the next one up? Yeah. This is the prophecy from Isaiah. Damascus will no longer be a city, but it will become a heap of ruins. Damascus is the is the cog of this wheel. Well, I remember you saying in previous episodes that uh, that Damascus really is the the sort of catalyst or the cog, the cog in the wheel, like you said, that will really uh, kind of be like if Damascus falls, and not just like a couple mm -hmm. little strikes here and there, but if the city itself mm -hmm. goes down. That this is uh, a major part of that prophecy. That's a major prophecy. And it's a thing that really, like, the world can't ignore. I mean, that's mm -hmm. one of the world's oldest cities. It's 5,000 years of un un unhindered uh, occupation. It has never not been occupied for 5,000 years. It right. has existed. You know, the oldest city in the world, you know. And so this prophecy has not been fulfilled. But it's with Assad, you know, with them leaving Assad in power in Damascus. Yeah, I hope this means something else. You know, I, whenever I say this, I always hope it means something else. Yeah. Right. But, but this is what it says, and it seems it'll be a heap of ruins, you know. And so, anyway, you know, I just wanted to show these things seem to be happening. Like the I's are dotted and the T's are being crossed. It's exactly, and the, you know, in Ezekiel, I, I've spoken about it here. There's two alliances of nations at the end. 
in Ezekiel 38. The alliance are Russia and Iran, United States and Saudi Arabia. These are the countries that are aligned in an access in the last days according to Ezekiel. That, that's all those countries are exactly like that and they're all exactly in the right place and they're all looking at Jerusalem. Yeah, like it, it's, it, 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 we're, I mean, what, if this were a chess game, we would... It's exactly what it is. <laughs> we would, we like, would be calling check, check, yeah, check, check. And, I mean, how many moves are there till we get to checkmate? Like two or three left? Yeah, it's, you know... I mean, we can dance around the, we can dance around the board for a while, yeah. but eventually that game has to end. Yes. And, and it will either be because everyone's like, wait, this is stupid, let's stop. Mm -hmm. Or <laughs> yeah. or they're going to be like, oh, well, you know, the book says we got to do these things. Like, do you think that it is because, like, do you think that the world leaders are keeping track of these prophecies, prophecies and saying, well, well, we have to do this so mm -hmm. that the second coming will occur? No, I don't think so. Well, you I know, mean, especially, I mean, if you look at Israel. You know, they're Jewish, and they don't believe in the New Testament. Sure. And so, you know, the Jews don't believe in the New Testament. So, you know, while the Christians see this prophecies about the second coming of Jesus, now the, the Jews are awaiting the Messiah. You know, they are awaiting the Messiah. Right. Based on the prophecies in the Old Testament, you know, which, you know, the Christians are also. But the Muslims are also waiting for the Messiah. You see, and the Muslims are waiting for the Mehdi. You see, and they have their eschatology. And, you know, ISIS used that as a huge drawing point. That's why they were getting all these young men and drawing them, is they were using uh, Islamic eschatology about the coming of the Mehdi. You know, and, and uh, so, you know, yeah. the, uh, uh, could we show the next, you know, the next ones are actually came before this because this was actually the last one. Uh, I wanted to show you this. This is the... Uh, the one that I was telling about, an Israeli dream might come true if Trump declares Jerusalem the capital, but so will an Arab nightmare. And uh, can we see the next one? Okay, yeah, okay, well, now we, uh, we covered all of them. But the interesting thing to watch here is that the Bible says that Saudi Arabia was going to, it's, it's not going to be necessarily on Israel's side, but it's not going to fight Israel. And it's going to be on America's side, which it is right now. Right. And what's interesting to watch is that Saudi Arabia isn't screaming. They're not threatening and doing all these things about Israel, about Trump saying that Jerusalem is the capital. And I read something today where they said that, uh, that Trump has a final plan for the peace. It didn't say what that plan is, but they said there's this final plan. And this is if there's some pieces that are still, we're going to start seeing some pieces come together. And I will be... Well, I hope it's better than his plan for the <laughs> wall. Because that, that one never quite yeah, happened. Never materialized, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, what they're saying with Jared Kushner and stuff that there is this plan that they have. But they said it's, nobody knows what it is yet. But the fact that Saudi Arabia... Yeah, is, is, not, uh, is on the is is like on the side of it, and and the the king might if he, the king comes to Israel, that's a huge step, you know, and so anyway, just all these things are going on, and and for me, you know, because I'm I'm both a reporter and a Bible student, and right. to see all these things happening, and I've spoken about it here before, but it's happening exactly like the scripture said. Well, and these are like within tangible time frames. I mean, I, we we haven't known each other all that I long, <laughs> and the fact that uh, you had some things that you had written that I read, and I was like, oh, this is interesting. Come on and talk about these things, and these things that you have uh, that that you like, not that you wrote the prophecies, but you did compile them and put them together in this sort of chronology. Uh, the fact that we are seeing these things happen yes. within the last two years, two <laughs> years, year and a half or yeah. something. How long has your show been on? Is uh, <laughs> uh, about two and a half years. Uh, I don't recall the first time I had you on. It was about the uh, book I had. Right. That was probably two years ago. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, like, this is just insane yeah. that, uh, and yeah, like, you heard it here first, folks, if you didn't read the Bible, <laughs> like, yeah. these, these were things that, uh, that we talked about and said, all right, keep an eye out for yes. these things. Yes. And now these things are happening yes. in front of our eyes. Yeah. You know, there's one thing that, that Jesus said about the second coming. He says it, it's, it's going to be like the tribulation. It's going to be like a woman who's going to give birth. And he says, you know, the thing about the birth pangs is that the birth pangs will first start out, you know, like an hour apart. And then they'll be, you know, 40 minutes apart. Then right. it'll be 10 minutes apart, five minutes apart, you know, then seconds apart, you know. And this exactly, is exactly, yeah. You see, the things start happening faster and faster. And, you know, it's like, you know, when I look at it, it's like I read the news every morning. It's just like, whoa, that's chapter and verse. I know the chapter and verse about that, you know. So, you right. know, that's how my brain works. And so, <laughs> anyway, so that's. Oh, man, you guys. This is the big one, though. Jerusalem, like, to quote Ghostbusters, I was going to say this. I've been planning this <laughs> for so long. Like, ghost, to quote Ghostbusters, this is the sign. So, <laughs> Remember what the lady says after that on Ghostbusters? Uh, it's been a long time. She says, yeah, the going out of business sign. But no, just kidding. Oh. <laughs> no, no, just kidding. But this is the big one. <laughs> yeah, the late great planet Earth, right? Oh, yeah. That was, that was a great book. That was, <laughs> yeah, but uh, anyway, so we see these things happening. And, uh, you know, I'm expecting to see, I'm very interested to see what happens with Jordan and with, well, with all of them, with Libya, Syria. Lebanon and uh, well and so now, I mean it looks like Damascus now more than ever is the one to keep an eye on since it seems like there's been pretty much like a sort of carte blanche given to Assad to yeah to go go do the thing take well, out they've been they've been yeah, from, from Saudi Arabia because Saudi Arabia you know it, there's you see what the problem is there which we've talked about here is the Sunni Shiite divide Right. Saudi Arabia, you know, in those two countries that Ezekiel talks about, the ones that he names by name, Saudi Arabia and Iran, he names those by name. You know, Russia and America, they're, they got these historical type names, but those are named by name. Sheba and Dedan, very clearly Saudi Arabia, and uh, Persia, which is very clearly Iran. Exactly. And that's, those are the two big moving forces, is the Sunni Shiite, whereas Russia has sided with the Shiites and America has sided with the Sunnis. And those guys, uh, you know, uh, Saudi Arabia is willing to kind of be friends with Israel, which it is doing right now, because it wants to hit out at the Shiite. They want to get the, you know, Iran out of the Middle East, you know, and Iran is, they're, they've got a huge reach over Syria. Iraq over Lebanon. Yeah, and, this is not just a oh, it's the Jews versus the Muslims. Like the, there is so much internal this, conflict going this on. This is it seems. internal Islam. This is between the Shiites and the Sunnis, both Muslims. You know, right? And yeah. so, well, and and as we like to clarify a little bit, what uh, within Islam itself, the Sunnis and the Shiites, the disagreement there. Uh, um, to Ali, you know, the, uh, well, yeah, the the original conflict was the true successor yeah. of Muhammad, right? Yes. So all of the political like uh, conservatism versus oh, we're going to be a little more lax or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, aside, what this is is a basic old school right of succession. That began with Muhammad after, you know, because one wants to go with Ali. Ali is the one that the Shiites go right. after. And Muhammad's daughter, Fatima, you know, she was. And then on the other side with Abu Bakr, you know, that was the first caliph. And then Omar and then uh, Uthman, you know. And so, and then they have, there's different, the Korans are different, too, between the Shiites and oh, the Sunnis. Really? Yeah, okay. There's differences in the Korans, it's too. Like the Protestant and Catholic Bibles. It's very, yeah. So... Yeah, and and all of and all of the like most horrid wars that have ever been fought have been these rights of succession Iran. kind of deals. <laughs> yes. So uh, I don't know. We'll see how it plays out. Uh, oh, we're uh, going to be seeing. So I think you know times are going to get real interesting pretty soon. Uh, now, unfortunately, as it always happens, uh, we're out of time. Mm -hmm. 
But I uh, want to thank you, Mr. Moshe. Oh, I thank think, you for I having think, me. I uh, think as much as we could, we, we got through. <laughs> uh, the, we got through the main thing. I really wanted to get that Saudi Arabia angle because that that is such a mind blower. Because Ezekiel said it by name that Saudi Arabia was going to be on this side, and they are now. Right, it's yeah. amazing to see. And this king, uh, aside from all that, watch this Saudi king. I like him, man. He is doing some great things in Saudi Arabia. He's going to give women's rights. He's going to shake things up. He's a young guy with an open mind, and so I'm really excited about what's going to happen there. So yeah, well, hopefully, uh, hopefully, there's a kingdom left for him to rule, and uh, and and enough left for everyone else to make peace over. Yes. Uh, uh, but in the meantime, you guys, uh, we got to go. So. Uh, <laughs> We'll uh, we'll catch you next time. Uh, I'm sure we'll uh, have Mr. Moshni uh, back on here. If again, the temple as, goes up, I'll be yeah, as, as things develop. Uh, so we'll catch you next time. Uh, in the meantime, wherever you're going, get your safe.